Welcome everybody to my quick talk about architecting scalable IoT systems with MQDT and Kafka. My name is Christian, I'm the CEO and co-founder of HiveMQ. HiveMQ is um, a global company that helps uh, comp like different industries like manufacturing, uh, car, like automotive, smart manufacturing, and others to connect the devices to the cloud. And one example for, is that we help a customer Liberty Global to connect their setup boxes for the TVs with the cloud, and so everybody can actually control and record their favorite shows onto um, just with their mobile phones when they're not at home. So today I will talk more about um, how we really architect together with our customers scalable solutions. And before I go into it, I would love to understand who of you have already built an IoT architecture before? That are maybe 40% of the room. Who has used MQTT before? Nice. <laughs> and who has used HiveMQ before? Uh, some potential in the room. So hopefully after my talk, there will be these people who like, like to try it out and see and give it a go. So today I want to talk about one of our customers, and maybe you recognize the car. This is from uh, Remats. They are, have built the world's fastest EV. And the founder and CEO, who is like, who's Mats Remats, he built up the company from scratch. And his vis vision was to really be the innovator in electric cars. This is what he wanted to showcase with building the world's fastest EV. And so Remats is all about innovation. They first of all, they innovate on the electric vehicle, then they figured out, oh, we're not just building vehicles, we are helping other OEMs with building car parts. So they changed the business from basically manufacturing uh, hypercars to manufacturing par parts for other OEMs. And then even go further to just white label their hardware and their software for other, other companies. But in 2018, the CEO realized they can do great at building hardware like cars and software for cars, but still they have to, when the car comes back from a test drive, plug it to a cable to download all the information they got from the vehicle, which he didn't seem was, was uh, like suitable for the brand and not was based on the, the time we are in. So basically, he had this vision to have really an even better customer experience so that customers really can use, also like when they're not in the vehicle, can use an app, can also control the vehicle and so on. But also he wanted to enable other innovative apps. So in, this, in regards to safety and comfort functions, like for example, setting up the heating system, if it's in the winter and you wanna get into a warm car, or also like entertainment purposes, like whatever selecting already what you wanna listen to on, an, on the next drive but also real-time analytics, which was key for them to also remote monitor cars and test drives, but also for the, pass, uh, for the drivers as well. So then he said like, okay, tech team, please help me, I wanna realize this vision, how can we build this? So the tech team looked at what are the challenges here, and they had like over 7,000 sensors in the car, generating millions of data points uh, per second, and they want to still be able for some use cases to have sub-millisecond latency. And the tech team, they already knew Kafka. They were using Kafka already for processing, but they, they didn't know how to really put it together with these new requirements. And they already knew it's not the right tool for uh, using it for this kind of device use case. Because Kafka is not ideal when you have thousands of connections, and you need also device management to know which devices are online or offline, and also making sure that unreliable networks are covered. Meaning like when a car goes into a tunnel or there's no network coverage, that still the messages who are arrived will get forwarded afterwards. And the same thing goes for large and flexible amount of topics. For example, everything of these 7,000 data points has its own topic. And this is something that is not easy to do or not really doable. So they initially, because them being like brilliant engineers, they want to build their own w solution on how to connect the cars to, to the cloud and then forward it to Kafka. And after time and time they built this up and it worked, and then they realized it takes a lot of time to maintain. They need to maintain their own protocol, their own solution. 
they also it was getting more and more complex because, as you know, like you need one feature, you need the next feature, and so on. So they even uh, found themselves in, in, a, in a mode where they built out their own protocol and spent a lot of resources just keeping it up, uh, up to date and maintaining it. It felt like reinventing the wheel for them. So they again challenged the initial assumptions that they need to build it by themselves, and they found um, MQDT. So basically, Remac found us and MQDT together, and they realized, hey, this can connect millions of devices. It can easily manage devices. It can provide reliability of unreliable networks and make sure we can handle all the topics they needed or for their business use cases. So what is MQDT? So MQDT is the de facto standard protocol for IoT. It is lightweight and enables efficient pub-sub messaging. Pub-sub is nothing new. But MQDT especially is very bandwidth efficient, only needing um, a few bytes of overhead to make sure it's really easy going on whatever device has just a low signal. It's really easy to use for that. But it's also reliable, has this reliability built in based on different quality of service levels. So for example, you might, for some messages who send, were sent maybe every second, you maybe don't want everything reliable because getting maybe updated, let's say, what the car speed is every second, if you miss one message, who cares? But if you want to lock or unlock your car, you care about every message. It will be delivered only one time and it will be delivered there for sure. And also, the third thing is it's stateful. It means it's made for devices. So when it's basically goes into like uh, unreliable networks or whatever, it makes sure the device gets all the updates. There's certain functions where it can make sure that if the device goes offline, it can send the last heartbeat. So it really makes sure that it, all the functions and functionality that the device needs, and it's like most devices are really small and cannot really have a full stack implemented there. They really have a different requirements. But this is like why it's stateful is so important. And so, it, but in order for using MQDT, you need, a, need uh, like a software to run it. And HiveMQ is the trusted MQDT platform. We are the global authority when it comes to MQDT. We've been helping to standardizing MQDT as a standard, and we're very active in, in the community since since 10 years. So, what does HiveMQ bring on top of MQDT? So, we bring the scalability to make sure to scale up to millions of devices. We bring the reliability because it's still, if the, if one of the, if the broker uh, goes down, still you can lose messages. So how do you make sure it will never go down and you have no data loss? But also security is key, right? So we provide also a way how to secure every data point, every device. There's nobody can kind of interject or hijack any devices. And of course it's flexibility meaning that you can easily also integrate other services like Kafka and, and others to make sure you can forward the data towards further processing and analytics. So let me quickly tell you about us as a trusted platform by uh, global, global leaders like BMW, um, Liberty Global, and others. So on the left side, you see we are ingesting data from devices. They can be either, either coming over MQDT, or also we have HiveMQ Edge, which bridges any kind of industrial protocol like, like Modbus, BACnet, and all these kind of very low-level protocols. Then we kind of transform it to MQDT and bring it into the HiveMQ platform. The platform itself consists of the broker, which is kind of the main component doing the messaging. And then we have a control center that it can allow us to administer, to uh, visually look at things, but also control and kind of do uh, like lightweight device management. And then we also have extensions to forward. And then we have a new component we just released today, which is called Data Hub. And Data Hub is really all about how to govern data. And it's all about making sure we validate and enforce standards or like governance um, policies towards the data as early as possible in the life cycle. Because we are the ones who bring the data into, this, into the cloud, it's Data Hub enables us to really, on the first touch point, to make sure the data is in the right format, it's correct, it's really enforced, 
and we're making sure that no bad data is in the overall system when it gets forwarded to Kafka and other systems. So this is really what Data Hub brings, like data integrity and quality from the first touch point in the cloud. Here's a simple example how it looked like. Uh, we, can also have, we also have a demo in our booth if you want to kind of have like, like more insights in this. So for example, here we can show based on policies, we can easily define what kind of visualization or other things look like. So, but we talk about here about to talk about how Kafka and IoT work together. So, therefore, we have a simple to plug and play Kafka enterprise extension. And this is for it's very simple to just put the data, the, the, let's say the massive data points that Remax, the Remax cars generating, putting this into um, HiveMQ and then over to Kafka because it's just a plug and play extension. There is no data loss. The extension makes sure, even for example, if there's a network connectivity issue between HiveMQ and Kafka, it buffers all the messages and makes sure still there is no data loss. With customers using us, because we, um, we provide them the guarantee that no data will be lost and it will just works from a connectivity standpoint. But we also can, of course, transform data on the go and also can, again, here do schema validation if there's specific things required for putting it into Kafka. So, Let's look at the end-to-end -end, um, remats architecture. So on the left side, you see cars who are inserting uh, the data. It goes to HiveMQ with the Kafka extension. And then there is the uh, Kafka cluster inserting it into different topics. And then they have a microservices um, connectivity cluster. Then therefore, it goes into different other data, data, um, data um, sources. And therefore, again, it gets forwarded towards the gateway system. And this is responsible for actually allowing third parties or the mobile apps to consume the data either in uh, real time or also like querying historic data. It's really great to see that uh, we worked closely with the Remax team, uh, Remax team on this and they have built this architecture and we, we supported them along the way. So let me dive a little bit deeper like what really happens between when the like, new car data comes in. So, here we see on the left again the cars. They sending telemetry data on different topics. Every vehicle is a different topic. Sometimes even more detailed data when it, when it goes, goes in there. And then the Kafka extension basically um, routes that towards one uh, telemetry topic on Kafka and therefore goes to a telemetry proce processing service on the microservice layer and then towards uh, permanent storage. And we look, look exactly how the mapping is done. So the MQT topic, which basically is the, the hierarchy of information, uh, like similar to like a HTTP uh, URL, URL um, is an MQT. So we have, this will get mapped to a Kafka key and the payload will get mapped to a value. And again, here is where, where our Data Hub product comes again in, which makes sure we really look into, let's say, not adding malicious or like raw bad data towards Kafka. So when you look at the overall platform that Remats has built, so for all the cars that are out there, not just for them, also for their OEMs who like use uh, the Remats platform for the cars, for the hardware, but also for the software. So they are using, uh, they are building this, have built this connectivity platform, which can now have exposed custom APIs or expose the mobile app. So they can actually use that to provide the value, the vision, the CEO, uh, Matt's Remats has initially kind of um, had in his mind when 2018 started this initiative to connect the car to the cloud for the first time. So how does it look like in the end result? So they really get powerful insights and analytics from that. On the left side, you see really a live tracking of, of cars in, in testing modes. On the right, you also see data they get from the cars while trying them out, while improving the cars. But also for the end um, user, for the, basically the driver, there is this super slick mobile app which they can use and it, it totally fits into the overall Remax branding. And again, this is like from, from the vision to towards the end of the end, the end result, seeing the app and seeing how this all fits into their, their branding was a big kind of a big uh, success for them to really showing this from day one where the CEO had the vision to connect the car to the cloud. At the end, really seeing that that happen and having different use cases they can use that for. And that was it from my side. I would 
really like to also engage all of you answering questions. 